Hello again. Okay, I recommend that you watch um, Sophia part one before you watch this one. Um, so just want to point out, why do I make these videos? Well, to be honest, um, there's not a living soul on this planet that I, at least in my, you know, community of humans, <laughs> can discuss this with them. My friends, church members, or family already think that I'm a bit crazy and off the wall. So I have to do something that you may think I too could be out of my brain. Um, this is an example of how Christians and or those who are awake or set aside, mocked, laughed at, and simply looked at as mentally unstable in society. And that will grow as times grow. Uh, Internet has speeded up communication and research, but at the high price of invasion of privacy. And is the internet and, and modern forms of communication in general, is that a purely positive development or are there things about it that's, that actually worry you? The internet has brought a lot of benefits, but it has its drawbacks and dangers, such as pornography and threatening messages. According to the new head of GCHQ, the Internet has become the command center for criminals and terrorists. More must be done by the Internet companies to counter threat, but the difficulty is to do this without sacrificing freedom and privacy. Now when you watch software engineers and machine learning experts at work, as, as they have been on this project, uh, how far along the path to artificial intelligence uh, do you think we are? The primitive forms of artificial intelligence we already have, have proved very useful. But I think the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. Once humans develop artificial intelligence, it would take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever-increasing rate. Humans, who are limited by slow biological evolution, couldn't compete and would be superseded. Well, I'm sure you know, uh, warned this week that technology could end up ending humanity at some point. Do you share that apocalyptic view of technology? Well, I think it's something that it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, I do think we have to worry about it. I don't think it's inherent that as we create uh, superintelligence that it will necessarily always uh, have the same goals in mind that we do. You know, humans don't always have the same goal as other humans. So who gets control of the technology? How is it uh, built in? I don't think there's a need to panic, but I think the dialogue along those levels, the, the people who say, that's, let's not worry at all, I, I don't agree with that. In a human-machine brain interface, like essentially a cyborg brain interface, I think that's some pretty... The so-called singularity? Singularity, well, that, that's sort of more relating to deep AI. It's something I think we should be concerned about, because that may or may not turn out well. Yeah, um, uh, you've expressed your reservations about AI and your views about that. Yeah, I just think it's... It, singularity is probably the right word, because we just don't know what's going to happen um, once uh, there's intelligence substantially greater than that of a human brain. Yeah, and do you think, I mean, because there's been a lot of sci-fi about AI, um, series like Humans, you know, etc., it's, it's entering the mainstream, entering the public discourse, that people are understanding the ethical dangers and the, I guess, physical dangers that AI could potentially pose? I mean, most of the movies and TV featuring AI, they don't describe it in quite the way it's likely to actually take place, but... I think you just have to consider, like, even in the benign scenario where um, AI, if AI is much smarter than a person, um, what what do we do? Yeah. What what is our what job do we have? Uh, believe in a benevolent AI force and affairs. <laughs> First, the scripture tells us. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name in his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. 
and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Revelations 13, 6 through 9. Then it says, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, and had the wound by a sore and did live. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. In Revelations 13, 14 through 7. Now, you have to remember John the Revelator wrote this when he couldn't understand what it was he was seeing, as we don't understand what it is that's in our future of something that doesn't exist. We don't have words for it. We can only describe from our point of view. And I had a dream last night, so I'll kick this off, and I'm going to try to make this quick. My dream, it was a very quick dream was that I was in, like, nature, like around trees and stuff. And I was running. And I was standing by this tree, like, in the mountains. And I saw this this mechanical instrument that looked like a very small airplane that flew through the trees, landed, and became a robot, but not a humanoid-looking robot. Kind of like a transformer or something. <laughs> That's all I can relate it to. And it had like infrared, so I couldn't hide behind the tree because it could see my body heat. And it wanted to kill me. And there was no place to hide. And the balance was unequal in warfare. So, and I, you know, was a war photographer, so I saw the in real life, the inequality of warfare, like with droids that would go through to certain neighborhoods, and then an F-16 would fly over and bomb an area. It's, and these people like would have to hand make their bombs and melt metal. So it's totally unequal. And in my dream, it was unequal. There was no place for me to run. And I woke up just as it was turning around, getting ready to shoot and kill me. So it's something unexplainable. It could have been, I don't know what, but it kind of jarred this video up a little bit. I can't explain it, but I'm saying keep your eye open. Okay, for the next video. Thank you. God bless. Bye. In fact, a lot of people who work in artificial intelligence believe that artificial intelligence is a thousand times smarter than we are. It will be moving at speeds that are 100,000 times as fast as we think, and it will be digesting information and data a million times more than we can. What is artificial intelligence? There are a lot of confused ideas about this outside in the world. But the answer is very simple. It's one sentence. Artificial intelligence is software that writes itself. It writes its own updates. It renews itself. We normally tend to think of software as stuff that we created and that we wrote and the machines do what we tell them to do and we own it. This is not any longer true. It writes itself at speeds that we can hardly comprehend and people who write it know that you can't take it apart again and figure out what it's done. It writes independently, autonomously. It develops its own way of thinking. 
and there are dangers associated with that. So a lot of people ask, when is it going to happen? When is artificial intelligence going to be smarter than us people? Some people say 50 years. Some say 30 years. Some say five years. I say it already has surpassed us in many areas of our society. Let's take, for example, some, uh, some examples from right here and now. And uh, I apparently have to point this. Goes. OK. The examples that we're going to talk about are not science fiction. They're not visions. They aren't things that are going to happen at some point. They are things that exist today, for example, in the stock markets, whether Frankfurt or Tokyo or New York or London. The people you see down there working on your TV show and you're watching, they're more or less extras in a movie. They aren't doing the big moving. The big moving is to be being done by high-frequency computers. They move so fast they make, in milliseconds, billion-dollar business. Computers have far succeeded what we can do. In fact, I did a film once about a company that moved five blocks closer to the Frankfurt stock market because at the speed of light on glass cable, they saved so much time getting closer to the computers at the, at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. That will give you an idea of how fast they, they think and how helpless we as human beings are. You may remember the old pictures of the stockbrokers with five telephones in each hand, running back and forth, writing things on paper. That was way before yesterday. Computers have taken over this very, very important part of our society, a heart of our financial community. And no one understands exactly how these algorithms function. They used to understand them, but they've been improved by artificial intelligence. I don't know how many people flew in today, but if you were sitting in an airplane, you probably had 30 different tar tariffs and prices in your cabin because the pricing is well done, same is true of hotels, by machines that are collecting global information, making decisions within split seconds what the price of that airplane seat or that hotel room is going to be.